My bank was left with just $21.59. I always remember that number. I remember I drew out uh, some money from the ATM at uh, Cathay Sydney Leisure. And I saw on printed on the thermal paper that I left with $21.59 in a bank account. Hello everyone, my name is Chris and I'm 50 years old and I'm the CEO of Provident. So I'm born in a family of uh, six. My father, he was a bus driver and he had four kids and I was number two. And back in those days, the practice almost is that the older children will always go out and work as early as they can to help support the family. Well, parents have no more money, right? So I decided to join the army. I spent six years uh, as an army officer. It paid well, at least back in those days for a diploma holder. I used the money actually to do a part-time uh, degree in finance during the six years uh, when I was in the army. I was actually second rookie in that uh, particular insurance uh, company. I was just really trying to survive. Halfway through that particular year, uh, my bank was left with just $21.59. I always remember that number. I remember I drew out some money from the ATM at Cathay Sydney Leisure. And I saw on printed on the thermal paper that I left with $21.59 in a bank account. So I was just working very hard. Uh, I worked late into the night. Uh, I had appendicitis, my appendix burst and I had to be watered. And I had a case to close. It was very crucial that I close it during that period. I asked the doctor, uh, how can I get out as soon as possible after the surgery? And doctor said, you just have to walk around, you know, and to make sure that you get the air out of the body. And so that was what I did. And, and straight away, I went to see the client and I, and I, I went to do the case. I was on my regular review with a client and it's a very good client. When I was recommending a product to him, he said this to me, you know, Chris, you know, I like you, right? And each time when you come and you tell me to buy something, I will buy from you. But surely there must come a time whereby I have enough insurance. Actually, when I heard him saying that, I was actually really guilty. The thing is, he was right. I felt bad, yeah, about it. And that this client of mine, which I'm supposed to plan for, instead, this guy was actually helping me, not me helping him, right? So actually that set me thinking, right? I was already not too happy, plus what my client said. And so that was what made me decided to leave the insurance company and start out something on my own. We said that, you know, we are going to be different and we're going to change the way advice is being given in the industry. The advice is being paid with commissions. Now, not that a commission-based advisor is dishonest, it's just that we cannot run away from the fact that there is an inherent uh, conflict of interest uh, as long as commissions are involved. We started as a fee-only wealth advisory firm from day one. By fee-only, it means that clients pay us a fee, we don't take commissions. The industry was very offended, naturally. I think they looked at me like, this guy is a traitor, you know, I mean, he's going out there, spilling the beans, you know, and all that. So it was tough. In fact, I, I received a letter in my mailbox uh, cursing my son, you know, <laughs> saying that I hope your son will get cancer. I wish that when your son gets cancer, you don't have enough coverage. I was actually quite shocked that somebody would be so triggered. Enough for him to take the effort to write a letter and actually know where I live because it was sent to my house. Yes, it was tough financially, but I think what was tough personally for me during that period was that I felt that I could have done a much better job in holding the hands of the clients. Every year, Provident, we have an annual client event. Bring the clients together, talking about the markets and talking about the portfolio performance. And I had to give an explanation of what happened. And I was telling my kid of compliance that this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that we should have done a much better job. And my, I remember my head of compliance told me, he said, Chris, if you say that, you know, there is a chance the client might sue you. <laughs> so I went up anyway and I, and I just simply apologized to the client and I said that we could have done a better job. We are sorry, but I'll make sure that this thing will never 
ever happen again. This time round, we were very prepared. 2020 was really the best year for us in terms of holding the clients, in terms of the business, and even in terms of investment performance. So in a way, I'm really glad that we went through 208 because there are not many advisors or many firms who have managed to go through such a big storm and still uh, survive. I think we are very grateful that we had the courage to choose what we believe is the best for our clients. We stood our ground. We believe that this is the best way to give wealth advice. Removing the conflict of interest, being multidisciplinary, holistic, comprehensive team approach, and Provident is just a very small player. Um, but what we really hope to be able to do is to at least let people know, you know, what good advice really looks like.